Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the Tulip Needle Threader, Achino Fabrics, the book review will be for Storybook Toys, I'll be showing my Ink and Elm backdrops, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this Sunday, I see Janine checking in. Um, hi Karen. Um, thanks so much for all the bag ladies and bag dudes joining me for Social Sunday. So just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk about, but they're just cool things that I found that I want to share with you. And also, if you're interested in, in any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about, there's a link in the description and it'll take you to a page with a list of the items as well as links to the websites where you can find them. So if you're interested in finding out more, just check that link in the description. Okay, starting off the chat, my favorite part is the notion of the week. And this week I'm talking about uh, the tulip needle threader. So let me show you this close up. Um, I just got this tool and I thought it was really cool and I tested out tested it out before the show. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed because even though I tried it out about a dozen times, I figure once I get live on video, um, it, it'll, it won't work when I'm trying to get it to work on camera. So this needle threader, if you check the back of the package, is for oval eye needles only. It won't work for circular eye needles or embroidery needles, but it would really be cool if they did come out with one that service embroidery needles as well. But this oval eye needle is a type of needle that I use for English paper piecing. It'll also work for applique. Um, so the, these are the needles that I like to use. Um, also Tulip, these are number 10 big eye applique needles. Okay, so let me take it out of the package. I wanna note that there's tons of places on here where it says press slowly. Um, it says it all over. There's even a sticker on the inside. So definitely important to press slowly. But let me show you the features of this needle threader. So this slot over here is where the thread will go. There's a hole over here on the top. That's where you'll stick the needle with the point facing up so the, the eye of the needle will be down inside the tool. There's a section over here that will cut thread right here. And there's also a magnet on the bottom. So this magnet can pick up any needles that you've dropped on the table or on the floor. It's not a super strong magnet, so it won't pick up much heavier than a needle, but um, it's designed to pick up the needles and it does that job just, well, just as well. And of course, the sticker on the top, press the button slowly. So even though there were all these warnings, when I was testing this out, the first couple times I pressed this button slowly, after that, I was getting a little bit um, too sure of myself and not paying attention. And when I was pressing the button not slowly, it wasn't threading. So definitely important to press the button slowly. Um, but let me show you how this works. Let me pull a thread out. Uh, let's go with some green thread so you can see it really well. Can you zoom in a little? Uh, yeah, sure. You can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Okay, so here's my green thread. This is 60 weight thread that I was using for some English paper piecing. So the thread just goes in that slot over there. You just lay it in the, the slot and pull my needle out. Oh, got one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, the eye of the needle in first and you just kind of lay it in there and you wanna make sure it's straight. I read in the directions if the needle was not straight, it, it would likely not thread correctly. Okay, so the moment of truth, we're gonna see if I'm pushing slow enough for the needle to thread, and it did thread. Um, the thing that I found with this needle threader is that it kind of loops the, need, the thread at the end, and you just need yeah, to take, oh, sorry. Um, you just need to take um, one end of the thread and pull it through the eye of the needle, just like that. Um, but it threaded it just fine, and then when I need to cut the thread later on, I can just um, push it through the thread cutter. So anyway, that's the tulip needle threader. Um, I'll be showing off a project this Tuesday using some English paper piecing. So I started using this tool because of the English paper piecing. Okay, um, some of the projects that I finished this past week, I didn't get a lot of sewing done, but I did make this one project. So we filmed a video for the filigree double zip pouch because um, it's got the two zips on the top. Um, but we filmed this for the next set of videos that we'll be releasing in May. 
and um, this is the size large of the pouch and normally I don't quilt my projects but for this project I always like to quilt it with just some basic straight line quilting and it's got the ribbons on the front and I tried to choose fabrics that were a little bit outside my comfort zone so that's why I chose this mustard colored solid and the ribbons on the front I was trying to go for sort of a vintage looking feel with the ribbons and the color choices and this ribbon I don't know if you can see it but it's got um, let me show you in the side view Danny if that's okay um, this ribbon's got um, some vintage Singer sewing machines so I thought it was pretty appropriate for a pouch that I'll likely use to put sewing notions in and it's got um, the two separate sections of the lining for storing your tools and I always like to use two different zipper colors so that I can easily determine which side of the pouch that I need to open up. So anyway, this video will be coming in May along with some other new videos. Another thing that I've been working on, I was actually working on earlier today is some English paper piecing and I'll show you in the side view so you can get a closer look. But I have a project scheduled for uh, Ask Sarah, my live show on Tuesday at seven o'clock and it's for an English paper piecing pouch, just a basic zipper pouch. Um, but I wanted to give people a chance to give English paper piecing a try if they hadn't already. And so the pouch only requires um, a small amount of these hexagons, 27 for the front of the pouch. I still have a couple more to add. Um, but the great thing about um, the English paper piecing is that I actually use some fusible papers to hold my fabrics in place. So traditionally, I see a lot of people using cardstock for the papers and using their thread to base the corners of the fabric to the cardstock. Um, but um, I use these fusible papers and they're also water soluble. So I just use these papers with a little bit of glue stick. And because I'm so used to using fusible for bag making, I felt right at home when I was working on these hexagons. But I'll show you more about that on Tuesday, not to go on and on about the papers, but they're really cool and fun to use. and. Um, I sewed all these hexagons while I was watching The Incredibles with my daughter, so I'll show you the full project this Tuesday, but um, it came together pretty quickly and I used all Tula Pink fabrics from her Fox Field line. So more about that on Tuesday. And here's my little stack of hexagons that I used to make this project because I was planning on making another pouch. So um, just fun stuff and different things to try. Still related to bag making, but um, hand sewing is definitely fun, especially over the summer. When I take my kids to the pool, I like having some hand sewing. Um, just so while I'm watching them, it goes by a little bit quicker. Um, the fabric that I wanted to show you this week is uh, not a new fabric, but still from my stash. And I've had a lot of email questions lately about particular fabrics that I use for several of my bags using a chino fabric. So I wanted to show those to you and I'll show you those in the side view. But I have a few different substrates of the Achino fabric in my stash. Um, the first is sateen, and you might recognize this particular print um, from my Minikins Jet Set cinched pouch that I made. So the sateen has a definite slight sheen to it, and this fabric also has the metallic. So this, this is gold metallic, which is really beautiful. Um, Satine is really great for garment sewing, but I use it for bags as well. And this one has a little bit of metallic in it also. Um, when I use this for the jet set, jet set cinched pouch, I did interface it with a bit of Pelon Shape Flex before I attached it to the foam, just because anytime I'm using sort of a fabric that's better for garments, I like to interface it with the Pelon Shape Flex so that it doesn't um, warp or stretch out, stretch out at all. Um, let me show you. I have one more sateen to show you. This is another bird print, and this is uh, silver metallic over here. Most of the Achino fabrics, however, are canvas. So um, here's one, one of my favorites. This is a bike print in canvas. And I just love the colors, and I feel like they're really modern and fresh. And so let me show you a few. These are all metallic, and these are canvas. So this is a silver metallic. This one's got black with metallic gold, and this one's my favorite out of the three metallics. And I just love the damask prints. Um, again, the metallics with the damask is really beautiful. And this is probably the first print that I ever saw from a Chino. So I actually was lucky enough to get a friend to sell this to me. It's long been out of print, but this print is called Bird on Ball. I put a link in the description for a Chino fabrics on Etsy just because 
Um, I, I have found some of these older prints on Etsy, especially if you're patient and check back every once in a while. So other shops carry a Chino Fabrics as well. I just thought Etsy provided sort of a better selection as far as finding some of those older prints. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. My question is, when you travel, do you go fabric shopping? So if you're traveling perhaps to another state, maybe another country, do you make it a point to go to other fabric shops? Perhaps do you investigate or ask around if there's fabric shops in the area before you go on a trip or before you go on vacation? I always like to go to fabric shops if I'm traveling to a different state, especially if I have a car or access to a car. I find it interesting because depending on the area, the selection in fabrics is always different and I'm always looking for, in particular, out of print tulip pink fabrics. I've had really good luck when traveling, finding really old tulip pink or out of print fabrics. So um, again, let me know the answer to my question in the comments. I'll be checking after the chat because I'm really curious to see if, if I'm not the only one that's doing some fabric shopping while they're on vacation and perhaps you found something really neat. Um, I know I have friends that have gone to other countries that have brought back some really cool fabric. So let me know in the comments. All right, this past Thursday, my husband Danny and I went to our first Toastmasters meeting. Um, it was about 15 minutes away, so not too far. And um, if you haven't heard me mention Toastmasters before, it's an organization that provides um, help for public speaking or giving speeches or just professionally um, conducting yourself in an environment um, where you, you feel comfortable talking to other people. So we went to our first meeting. It was two hours long. Two of my favorite parts of the meeting, well, first of all, I have to say that there was a good mix of men and women, so it was about half and half. And a lot of the members were longtime members, so I'm talking eight or, eight or ten year they've been members for, which is really cool. Clearly, that means they get a lot, a lot out of the meetings. But two of my favorite parts of the meetings were the table topics, first of all. So there's an organizer that takes care of the table topics, and they call three or four people up to the front, give them a topic that they didn't know about beforehand, and they're asked to give a speech that lasts between one and a half and two minutes long about that topic. So two things that I thought was cool about that. First of all, you know, it's off the cuff. You just have to get up there and give a speech. Um, and second of all, because it's timed, you have to be to the point and succinct about what you're talking about. You can't ramble on, um, you can't have a lot of empty space because you don't have a lot of time to get your topic, um, to talk about your topic. So I thought that was cool and I also enjoyed watching the scheduled speeches. So there were four speeches that were scheduled so these people knew their topics and they were able to pra practice their topic ahead of time. These speeches were four to five minutes long, and um, they were also given feedback about the speeches afterwards. So there was someone assigned beforehand to give them feedback about their speeches. My favorite speech was about um, a gentleman telling a story of when he lost his cat when he was a younger man. And um, it's so interesting picking up tips about talking to other people. Um, I introduced myself toward the end, and I admitted that you know, I walk my kids to school. We live about three houses away from the school. And after I drop them off, walking back from the school, I'm also, I'm always, and I don't mean this in a rude way, but I'm always crossing my fingers that I don't see someone that I know because, you know, I feel nervous about talking to people and greeting them and, you know, asking how their day is. So that, that kind of makes me nervous. I know that sounds silly, but um, just being honest and so that's what one of the reasons that I wanted to start going to the Toastmasters meetings with Danny so that I can improve and um, anyone can always improve with public speaking um, clearly since some of these people have been members for 10 years they find that they can improve as well even after the 10 years so anyway it was a lot of fun thanks so much for all of the emails that I got regarding the Toastmasters in the comments I really appreciated it and um, gave me the confidence to go to the first meeting. I had a lot of fun. Okay, so the jumping on to the book review for this week, I wanted to show my little horse that I usually have in my um, setup back here. So I did not make this horse, but I had someone, I purchased it and I had someone make it for me. Um, but this horse is one of the projects in my book review for tonight, minus the unicorn horn. It's just a, a horse in the book. Um, but 
I've always loved horses. I love the idea of sewing a plush toy. And so I wanted to pick up the book that this horse was in because I wanted to sew one of my own. He's made of corduroy. You can use other fabrics as well, but um, I just love him so much and I'd like to sew some more. So let me step over to here and show you the book review for this week. Um, the book is called Storybook Toys. It's written by Jill Hammer and it's a good selection of not only animals, but there's also dolls and puppets. So um, a great selection of pro different projects to make, especially for kids. Okay, so I'm gonna flip through, see there's the horse. Um, let me flip through some of the projects and show you and all the pattern pieces are in the back of the book and they are full size, so there's no need to enlarge them or change the size of the pattern pieces, they're all in there. So there's a section at the beginning with helpful information about what supplies and tools you'll need. Um, I also like um, there's sections in each project, a little note about how kids can help. So something specific that a child can help you with the project, so maybe threading the needle or there's different suggestions given for each project. Um, they show you which stitches will be needed for the projects and there's also things like transferring the faces, how to make hair, all that's included in the front of the book. Okay, so let me flip through some of the projects. So here's the hair section. All right, let's get to some of the projects and they're all really cute. I would say there's about half, half of the projects are for dolls and the other half are for animals and um, I think they're all animals, the other half of the projects. These would be really cute for a toddler or for a first soft toy for a child or a baby. I could even see these given for baby showers and they'd be really cool. Um, there's minimal illustrations. A lot of the, especially when I was looking at the horse project, there's not a lot of illustrations. So I had to read through the instructions a few times, but they are easy to understand if you're you know, paying good attention. Okay, so let's get to some of the animals in the, the book. All right, so these kitten pillows look pretty easy. I think that would be probably a good spot to start with a first project from a soft toy. Humpty Dumpty, that's pretty adorable. Um, there's a puppy that I think is really cute. I'll show you that one in a second as I get to it. Um, Cottontail, perfect for Easter. Look how cute he is. There's the puppy. He's made with a, a red polka dot corduroy and he's just darling. Okay, and there's that horse that I showed you. So this one's also made with corduroy. He's got a button eye. Um, the one that I have is has not a button eye, like a an eye for soft toys. And this elephant sewing caddy would be really cute to make. This one's made of wool. Um, I think I would probably, if I made this, I would probably make it with wool also. So again, the pattern pieces are all in the book. There's a lot of them, but they're organized really well. And I tore this one out already because I was um, planning on making the horse first thing. So again, the book review, the book is called Storybook Toys. The author is Jill Hammer. And if you're interested, um, the link is in the description where you can find that book. Okay, so this is the part of the chat um, where I ask where all my bag ladies and bag dudes are. So um, if you're a bag lady or a bag dude, or maybe you're a wannabe bag lady or bag dude, let me know in the comments and be proud about it. Say, I'm a bag lady um, or bag dude, if you're a guy. Um, I get excited seeing people make their first bags. In the Facebook group, there were a ton of first bags posted this week, very first bags, so I was super excited about that. If you're not already a member of the Facebook group, um, the link's in the description and I hope you'll join us over there. And if you do make your first bag or first So Sweetness bag, I hope you'll post a photo of it. I love seeing all the photos and seeing also the different fabrics that people are using because they're all different. And I feel like the different selection of fabrics really makes the project and makes it look different. So sometimes I see a bag that I've seen a million times before and because it's such a different fabric, it really makes it stand out and look completely different. So I hope you'll join us over there. It's a lot of fun. Um, also a reminder, if you have any questions, either sewing related, bag related, or if you have a question about a sewing tool, please post your question in the comments and we'll be getting to some questions live in a little bit. So post your questions now if you have them. Okay, so I'm really excited to show these to you. Um, these are some backdrops that I've purchased from Ink and Elm. I have about a dozen different backdrops two different sizes. So I have smaller backdrops that are four foot by five foot. And I also have some that are bigger, 
uh, for photographing maybe a person or a smaller person. I, I'm not sure if my husband Danny would fit in the bigger backdrops, but my bigger backdrops are six hey. foot by se six foot by seven foot. So um, let me first. We're going to show you a few photos that I've taken using the backdrops. Some of the photos were taken inside in our basement with some lighting and some were taken outside with just natural light. So Danny's going to put uh, three pictures on the screen. Again, these are pictures that I took using backdrops. So this is sort of a mosaic tile looking backdrop. And there's some other pictures that I took with the Sublime bag. And these are um, taken with my favorite backdrop, which is sort of like a white brick. So there's me in front of the um, bigger six foot by seven foot backdrop. And there's just the bag by itself. Um, in front of the same backdrop. So anyway, that, that those were taken in my basement. Let me pull up one of the backdrops. Um, let me pull up the white one first. Okay, so I keep these rolled in, actually I keep them rolled in the cardboard tube that they came in the mail in. There's an option for you to pay a few extra dollars for the backdrop and have them put um, grommets in for hanging purposes. Since I have a rivet press with a grommet die, I just put these in myself, but you could have them, before they mail them to you, put in these grommets as well. So this is that, that white brick, brick backdrop that I had with the Sublime bag. This is the four foot by um, five foot backdrop, excuse me. Um, and this is sort of a heavy duty vinyl. So they print this image on the vinyl. The back is just white. Um, and these are, I have to admit that two weeks ago, I hung this particular backdrop on my deck. I have a wooden fence and I have some S hooks where I where I hang the grommets on and I admit that I left this backdrop outside for a whole week so it rained, it snowed. Um, the backdrop was fine. I didn't have to wipe it down or anything like that but um, I made sure to bring it inside on a dry day. But anyway, this is uh, one of my backdrops that I have. Um, my tip to you about the backdrops would be when you hang them or in the case of my backdrops that I use in the basement, I just use some duct tape to tape them. We have like a cement, we have an unfinished basement with a cement wall. So if I'm taking photographs in the basement, I have them um, duct taped to the wall, but here's another backdrop. When hanging the backdrops, you should just make sure that you keep the backdrop straight because it's supposed to look like, say a, a fence or a brick wall. Sometimes I see backdrops hung that are sort of wavy, they, like they haven't flattened them out and for sure a brick wall shouldn't look wavy, nor should a, a wooden fence. But anyway, these backdrops are really helpful. You don't need to have 12 like I have. One will be plenty. Um, my favorite, since I'm always using bright colors for my fabrics, my favorite is that white brick wall. I also like, and I also have um, a white sort of um, distressed fence. Um, either the brick wall or the fence would be really great for a backdrop. and. Um, the link to Ink and Elm is in the description. If you sign up for their newsletter, they're always having sales, especially on holidays. So um, you might want to wait for one of their sales. They often have a sale, buy two, get one free, something like that. So that's how I ended up with about 12 backdrops. Every time they would have a sale, I would just buy more. But now that I've used them for a while, I, I know that I always gravitate toward that white brick backdrop. So if I had to do it again, I would probably just buy that one and maybe the the, the white fence and I'd call it a day. Um, so I have a question, a photo photography related question for you. Let me know in the comments. How do you feel about taking photos do you, you know, of your finished project? So whether it's a bag or a quilt or something else, do you feel confident about taking photos or do you feel like you need a little bit of assistance? So I am in the department of feeling like I need assistance. Whenever I have to take photographs for something, I leave it till the very last. I do whatever I can to avoid it. Um, I just don't feel confident or good about taking the pictures and I feel like I struggle with it. So lately I've been having Danny take most of the pictures if he's not busy or even if he is busy, I'll, I'll sort of ask him really nicely to convince him to take them for me, but. It's never nice. <laughs> it's never nice, he says. Um, Anyway, I, I think I'm just too critical of myself. I think the pictures I've taken in the past are fine, um, but it's just not my favorite thing to do. But honestly, having a good backdrop helps a lot because then I don't have to have, you know, a cluttered sewing machine in the, the background of my pictures or, um, you know, if I'm taking a picture in the kitchen, any kind of mess from the kitchen. So, um, yeah, curious to see what other people are saying in the comments as well. 
All right, so let's get over to the giveaways in a second. Um, I just wanted to say before I answer some questions that the winner of last week's giveaway was Peggy Ann Black, so congratulations to Peggy Ann. I admit I had a little bit of a late start today, so I haven't contacted Peggy Ann yet. In case you're watching, feel free to email me, otherwise I'll be emailing you after the show. Um, all right, so let's get to some questions. I also wanna ask if you enjoy watching my live chat, Social Sunday. I invite you, if you're watching on Facebook, to please share this video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, to please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you'll be notified of future sewing videos. All right, so let's get to some questions that you have, either on Facebook or YouTube. Danny's gonna put some questions up on the screen. And uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about some sewing stuff. My kids, I, had, I admit my kids are on spring break this week, so they were really excited about um, lots of extra computer and TV time. So that's what they're doing right now because um, they know that we're busy with the live chat. Okay, Withrow Jeanette says, will you be making a wallet pattern? Yes, I have several, not just one, but several wallet-ish projects coming up. I'm working on a big grouping of patterns for a little bit later in the year. I do have a wallet pattern um, from a few years back called the Greenbacks Wallet Trio with three different wallets, but I wanted to come up with something different and I had a few ideas, not just one. So that'll be a little bit later in the year and I'll let you know on the live chat when those are ready to come out. There's a delay in the questions because a lot of people say they need assistance with the photos. So, and they're still going through the feed. All okay, time. all right, sorry. Going through. Sorry. All right, Danny's gonna be putting some questions on. He said a lot of people were commenting about um, my question regarding asking about taking photos. So it sounds like I'm not the only one that needs a little bit of, of help in that department with photographing my projects because I feel like the photographs really make a difference. You know, the project could be lovely, but if your photo looks dark or um, the angle of the photograph of the bag that you've taken is not quite right, it sort of takes a great project and sort of diminishes, diminishes it a little bit, at, at least in the regards to showing it off online in photographs. Lottie says, I take photos outside, do you ever do that? The natural light works better for me. Yeah, for sure, natural light is my favorite. I prefer an overcast day, so not bright sunlight coming out. Maybe the sun's in the clouds or it's just a cloudy day to begin with. For me, that's the best type of day for taking photographs because sunlight on the project can sometimes make the colors look a little bit washed out or whited out. So I always prefer a cloudy day if possible, if I can, sometimes, it, you know, Obviously, you don't have a choice of what kind of day it's going to be like, but um, overcast days are the best. All right. Any other questions, Danny? Or? Yeah, I just sent one through. Okay. I guess we're having a little bit of delay in posting the questions on the screen. Uh, just curious about your pattern bag or other type. Was your first to design? Was it a free pattern or for sale pattern? Okay, that's a good question. Um, do you want to give me the iPad and I can uh, read the questions off sure. live? Okay. We're having a little bit of uh, trouble with posting. Oh, here we go. Um, Kathy wants to know, just curious what pattern, bag or other type was your first to design and was it a free pattern or a for sale pattern? So my first ever pattern that I designed was a free pattern and it was called the Naughty Secretary bag. It was just a tote bag with some um, accents on it. Uh, the funny thing about that bag is that after I designed it and put it up, up on my blog, uh, Pelon contacted me and Pelon manufactures a lot of interfacings and, and they wanted me to design free projects for them and um, actually they wanted that pattern for their website as well and I said sure their website is pelonprojects.com and uh, they loved the project they just didn't like the name because it was Naughty Secretary I guess it wasn't uh, they felt it wasn't appropriate for their site so they called it the Lindsay bag on their website. So it has a different name on the Pelon website and my website, it's still the same project, but that was the first pattern that I ever designed and haven't looked back. I kept along with all the bags since then. Okay, um, oh, Mary Christine wants to know the bag on the table, is that a separate pattern or is it a group or a bundle? So it is currently available on my, on my website. It's called the Filigree Double Zip Pouch. This is size large and it comes in medium and small as well. Right now it's available as a paper pattern and a PDF pattern. We just filmed the video for it, so if you're interested in the video, that'll be available in May. We'll be selling the video separately as well as in a four-pack video bundle, so either way, um, if you're interested in this project, you can get the video for that in May. Lydia says, new to bags, do you have a beginner's course set? Are you planning one? I would definitely take this type of class. So. 
Um, I'm not sure if you're looking for a beginner project or just uh, tips for a beginner, but I have two great videos plus patterns on my YouTube channel. One is for the Baker Street bag. That one has a zip closure. And there's also one called the Easy Leather Hobo Bag that has a magnetic snap closure. Either of those would be great for a beginner, but in fact, I have to admit that I've seen a lot of my other patterns and videos made for a very first bag. So um, you don't necessarily have to limit yourself if the Baker Street or the Easy Leather Hobo Bag are not your style. Um, maybe check for one of the other patterns that I have available with a video, and you can find that on my website, sosweetness.com. Um, online workshops will be paid videos and uh, video tutorials will be free. So whichever you're interested in, those are both at sosweetness.com. Brenda wanted to know, do free motion quilt on the vinyl with the foam attached? So um, I haven't, um, I can't think if I've quilted vinyl, but when I quilted this bag, this is just canvas fabric, but I did quilt with the fabric and the foam already attached and then I um, used my walking foot to quilt this. Um, but I have seen some people that quilted leather and um, vinyl. I feel like it looks poofier, aka a little bit nicer if you quilt it with the fabric attached to the foam because the foam gives it a little bit of um, a pop and a bit of a cushioning. So um, again, this was quilted with the fabric attached to the foam already. Kathy wants to know, for the newbie bag maker, how difficult is the Kennedy bag? So far, I've only made the Baker Street bag and I didn't find it too hard. Um, so the Kennedy bag has a bit of extra hardware. There's some buckles um, and there's a bit of hardware for the strapping. We are gonna do a video for the Kennedy bag. I don't have a date for that yet. Um, probably not in April, but maybe we'll get to it in May. I think that would be really cool. I already have in my head uh, the fabrics that I'm gonna make it in for the video. I decided on a wool fabric for the body of the bag and the accents, probably either leather or uh, cork fabric. So um, we'll try to get that, that for you in May, the video for the Kennedy bag. Tammy wants to know, would you ever design a travel bag for crochet and knitting projects? So I have a few options. Um, I don't have the bag in this room, but I do have a free video and pattern for the Oslo craft bag. That's free if you sign up for my newsletter. It's a great uh, craft tote bag. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people make it for um, toting yarn and needles and other supplies. Um, there's a couple others that I could suggest. The Creative Maker Supply Case would be great for holding knitting needles or crochet hooks. And also the Amethyst Project Bag. Um, that one also is a, a larger bag for fitting more, in, more supplies inside. Um, and all three of those have video. So the Oslo Craft Bag is free with the video and the other two are not free, but Patterns and videos are available for those as well. Kathy wants to know, what was the company name of the canvas fabric you talked about earlier? Um, so these canvas fabrics, the designer is Achino. Um, the manufacturer is Coca. Um, and you can find that link in the description. Uh, Chino is spelled E-C-H-I-N-O. Pat wants to know, what about doing a retreat in Southern California? You can plan it with a family vacation and include Disneyland. Funny, I was actually thinking about that earlier today. I didn't mention it to Danny just because he was busy with other stuff, but I thought it would be cool to go to California actually somewhere nice and warm and have a sewing retreat there and uh, somewhere fun for the kids as well after the retreat's over. We love Disneyland, so that sounds like a great idea to me. Pamela wants to know, would you consider doing a cruise? I'd love to do a cruise. I'm unsure if I would be um, okay to go, you know, be on the water if I would get sick or not. I have gone in boats before, but not on a big cruise ship, so I'm not sure how that works as far as to getting seasick. Um, I'd love to teach on a cruise as well. That would be a lot of fun, and um, docking at different places and seeing different um, parts of the world. That would be awesome. Um, Kaylee wants to know, how do you organize your hardware and zippers? So I have a, it's in the basement. Otherwise, I would bring it up on the table and show you. I purchased um, an organizer from the hardware store. Danny, do you know what that organizer is called with those little drawers with the little hardware goes in? Um, it's something with bins. Okay. Oh, the name. Yeah, sorry. I'll show it next week on Social Sunday. Maybe that'll be the notion of the week. And I have my zippers. Uh, let me see if I can grab it. Okay, so I have two different containers with zippers. So these are my 22-inch zippers in here. I just got these containers from Target. I have a smaller container up, up as well, but it's, it's higher up there. I like to buy number three zippers in two different sizes just so I can always have the colors that I need.
but not have every single size available. So these are the 22 inch zippers and I also have 18 inch zippers. So basically if I need a nine inch zipper, I'll cut an 18 inch zipper down and anything bigger, I'll go with a 22 inch zipper. I also have some handbag zippers in the basement, but I buy these number three zippers from a shop on Etsy called Zip It. Um, they have a huge selection and I buy like the zippers in bulk from them. So um, this is how I organize my zippers. I'm, I've seen nice sewing machine pictures with the zippers hung on um, pegs, which looks really nice. I just don't, I don't have the extra space in here because these bookshelves take up like my main wall. So my zippers are in a bin for now. Nancy wants to know, would you consider doing a video on your Sloan bag pattern? Yes, we are planning on getting to, eventually getting to all of the older patterns, turning them into videos. I'm not sure if we'll get to the Sloan bag this year, but um, certainly if we finish shooting the videos that we had planned and we have extra time, we'll get to as many as possible. Nikki wants to know, do you, did you ever hear back from that company who makes the ballpoint corner tool? <laughs> you know, the one that Danny misused and misplaced? Yeah, she's, Nikki's talking about this tool right here. Um, this is called the RNK Precision Turning Tool. Basically, it's a turning tool with a little metal ball on the end that's great for turning things right side out and poking the corners out. Um, for the longest time, I couldn't find a supplier for this tool. And then actually, I don't remember her name, but somebody was kind enough to email me and tell me that um, this tool was only available to suppliers of Valdani threads. So I'm going to be looking into contacting Valdani Threads to see if I can get just these tools because I would buy hundreds of them because they're the most awesome thing. And I think people, I think some of my viewers would be interested in this as well. Um, and, but it's like a fully metal piece. There's no attachments to break off or anything, which is really cool. Um, but I'll try my best because I love this tool so much. Alex wants to know, have you announced which patterns will be released in the May bundle? I'm rooting for the amethyst pattern. So good news, we actually already have a video for the amethyst project bag pattern, if that was the one you were looking for. Um, just go to sosweetness.com, click on online workshops, and you, the video is right there. Um, so obviously the filigree double zip pouch will be in the next bundle in May, since we already shot that one. Um, there's a new bag, brand new pattern, crossbody bag that'll be in that bundle. Um, the Hyacinth bag, which we took it out of here already, um, it's another crossbody bag, but a different shape. It's like a slim, slimmer, larger bag. And I, Danny, do you remember what the fourth project was? No. No. Okay. I don't remember either. It was on my list. I had a list um, in, in one of my notebooks. Um, but we'll definitely be letting you know what bags are in that bundle ahead of time because I know people are excited to see what the next projects will be. Another question, I want to sell bags to sell. What are your thoughts on metal zippers versus plastic zippers? Do you feel buyers are partial to metal or do plastic zipper bags sell just fine? I've actually never sold a bag, but the good thing about the metal versus zipper question, there are actually nylon zippers available now and I actually have some in my bin. Let me see if I have one that I can grab really. Oh, I do. Maybe Danny will be kind enough to put this in the side view. So this is actually I know it looks like a metal zipper, but these are nylon coils actually. So this is a handbag zipper. Um, I purchased this as a, like, sort of like a zipper by the yard. So this is a great alternative to using a metal zipper, especially if you're nervous about the zip metal zipper teeth because these are metal looking, but they're just nylon. So um, these are really cool. I've actually used this before in another color, that bag that I told you about just a second ago that was new coming out in the next bundle. That one has uh, one of these metal nylon looking zippers in there. So um, let me see. Okay, so this is where I purchased, sorry, Danny. <laughs> this is where I purchased this from, bagmakersupply.com. Um, so you can, let me hold it so you can see it. Um, there's other sellers on Etsy that carry these as well. And um, this, just look for a zipper with a metallic coil or a metallic chain. All right. Nancy wants to know, oh, comment from Nancy. Absolutely, Texas would welcome you with open arms. We have a lot of crafters here. Um, my husband was actually talking about going to Texas. Uh, we have, well, he has some friends there, some computer gaming friends, so maybe we'll be heading there sometime soon. Uh, Debbie says, come to Minnesota to teach. Bring the family to Mall of America. Mall of America, I've never been to Mall of America, but I've always wanted to go because I heard there was a roller coaster in there. Um, Empress Noel says, I vote Las Vegas. I live here in great weather and lots of things to do other than just gambling. Las Vegas would sure be fun. Um, thanks for all the suggestions. Um, maybe uh, something will sound good to Danny. Anything sound good to you, Danny, as far as the, uh, 
We have a long summer. I vote for all of them. Okay. Oh. Someone mentioned, uh, I can't find it because we had a lot of zipper comments, but about a backpack pattern and also what kind of material you use for a lunch bag. Oh, okay. Um, Danny says there's a question about backpack patterns. I have two backpack patterns and a third in one of my books. So there's one backpack in Windy City Bags. Oh, you found the question? There's one backpack in Windy City Bags. Um, I forgot what I called that one, but it's a backpack that will hold a small laptop and it's padded as well. Um, there's also the Cumberland backpack. That one has a video and as well as a pattern if you don't want the video. And there's the Edelweiss bag. So three backpacks that I've designed. Actually, I'm working on a, a fourth backpack with just one strap right now. So I'm excited about that one because I've never had a backpack with one strap, but it seems exciting to me. So I'm working on that. And also a lunch bag. Trying not to rip my microphone out. <laughs> Let me grab this lunch bag. Um, I have a few lunch bags that I've designed. This is in the Minikins. This is the um, Morsel lunch bag. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. It's got a zipper. If you want to make the lunch bag in laminated fabric, or if you don't have laminated fabric, um, Pellon and other manufacturers makes a product that you can iron onto fabric to make it laminate, laminated. Or also on the inside, you can use um, a PUL or a laminated fabric. PUL fabric is commonly used for diaper making. So um, if you're in the US, my Joann's has a small diaper making section with those types of fabrics. Um, the nice thing about either laminated or PUL fabric is that it wipes clean with a damp rag. Um, also, in the lunch bag, um, you, you should consider using an insulated fleece. So several companies, Warm and Natural makes an insulated fleece, so does Pellon. And what it does is it's a fleece interfacing with one side um, sort of a, a metallic silver looking finish and that kind of like tin foil and that side insulates so it either keeps the the cold inside the bag or if it's hot items it keeps the, the heat inside the bag and you just orient when you're assembling the lining you just orient that silver um, side with the, the silver finish on the inside toward the inside of the lunch box so it keeps everything either hot or cold. Um, I also have the peas and corn lunch bags which is a pattern with two different styles of lunch bag as well as um, sort of like a zippered sandwich bag. Um, that's a standalone pattern as well. We haven't put out a video for that one yet, but the Morsel lunch bag, one of the Minikins does have a video. Roxanne wants to know, where, do you, where did you say you got the mosaic print for picture backgrounds? So those are backdrops, custom made backdrops. Um, the company is called Ink and Elm and the link is in the description if you want to go to their website and see they have hundreds of different backdrops. So anything. Um, I know a lot of photographers that buy the backdrops from there, but I buy it just to photograph my bags. Um. <laughs> Empress Noel says, I'm working on adapting a paper piecing pattern to build out the TARDIS to handbag size. That would be awesome. Danny was just playing, um, if you're familiar with Doctor Who, the, the sound that the TARDIS makes. We're big Doctor Who fans over here. Whew, let me grab something to drink. My throat's getting a little dry. <laughs> Yeah please, let me cool yeah, please let me know about the, the TARDIS pattern because I'm really interested in that. Um, Sandra wants to know, are you ever coming to the UK? I haven't been asked, but it would be really awesome. I do want to go to Europe with my family and see all like castles and everything like that. So uh, I would love to come to the UK. That would be really awesome. Uh, Babby says, I've never seen your social Sunday before. I will be watching for it next week also. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you enjoy watching it. So the Sunday show is a little bit different than our Tuesday live show. On Sundays, obviously, I talk about notions, tools, projects, book reviews. On Tuesday, we always show a brand new video live. So the video on Tuesday will either be something, a video to make an entire project or a tutorial video. So last last week on Tuesday we showed how to install magnetic snaps and invisible magnetic magnetic snaps. This week we're I'm going to be showing a um, project combining English paper piecing with bag making. So that's the project for this Tuesday. I know Myrta is waiting for the guitar strap video that'll be coming not this Tuesday, the Tuesday after Easter. Uh, Lawanda says, "Come to New Mexico for the balloon fiesta. Take your picture with stormtroopers." Yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds awesome. Well, we have, Danny, next year we have to schedule a lot of traveling so we can go to all these fun places. This year's still early. We have plenty of time <laughs> this year. Victoria says, come to Tennessee. We have the Smokies, Dollywood, Pigeon Forge. Yeah, we did want to go on vacation. We were supposed to go on vacation last summer with our neighbors to Dollywood. 
and stay in the mountains, but it sort of fell through. So maybe this summer we'll be able to do that. That would be awesome. Barbara says, will you be getting any more of the Oriful thread packages back in stock on your website? Oh, so I opened up um, an account to start carrying Orifil spools. So my first order for this is for the small spools because I want people to have an opportunity to try the Orifil thread out that I use because I get a lot of questions about it. So we'll be selling three sm small spools in the colors that I use the most often in a little pack. So a three pack of white, gray, and black. Um, I don't know the pricing yet. I think it'll be around $15. So definitely um, manageable for most budgets. And if those do well and people ask for them, maybe the large spools down the line. But um, I just want people to have that available to them because I'm getting questions every week where they can buy the Orifil. So I thought, let's just make it easier. Um, if you want to buy it on my website and get, you know, throw some cork or if some cork accidentally falls into your shopping cart. <laughs> and that works out that way, that would be fine too. Uh, Ruth wanted to know, is sewing on laminate same as vinyl? Yes, when you're sewing with either laminate or vinyl, since it has sort of a shiny, sticky finish, you always wanna use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot. Um, your regular metal sewing machine foot will sort of stick on the fabric, so the Teflon or the walking foot will glide really nicely through those two different materials. Um, Janice wants to know, what was the challenge Dan spoke about? What was the challenge? I don't, uh, I don't know if you're talking about the, the closed group. So we have, oh yes, group. I know what she's talking about. So in the month of April, Danny had an idea to do a challenge for um, a free cross body bag pattern. So I had an idea for a cross body bag, a smaller bag, because I've had a lot of people ask me for more small bags. I had a great idea for a pattern. I just didn't know what to do with it. You know, should it be a free pattern with a video? Should it be, are we selling this? What are we doing with this? So. We decided it would be a free pattern, but our challenge to you um, to, make to make it a free pattern would be to, um, if for people that are watching on Facebook during the month of April, so not now, but during the month of April, to get at least 100 shares for each of our live videos. So that would be eight live videos in April or on YouTube. Uh, we haven't decided on what the challenge would be yet for that, but. Um, basically, if we hit the goals, then the pattern will be free. It'll be out with a video and a pattern at the end of April. So basically, as soon as April's over, if we, if we meet the challenge, then it'll be free and we'll put it out. And um, it was originally supposed to be a small crossbody bag, but because I'm like always into using the larger prints, it'll be a small bag and also a larger size as well. So two different sizes, I've decided, and um, that's the challenge I think that you were talking about. Pamela says, come to Oregon. We have, oh, just come. <laughs> we have Portland. I've been to Portland, I think, once or twice, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Dawn wants to know, do you have any more projects for the Cork Club? Yes, we have five more. We'll be posting the second Cork Club project. The first one was an eyeglass case. The second Cork Club projects we'll be posting on April 1st. So I know that's Easter, but, oh, I also wanted to mention about Easter. Let's have that be the last question. Um, oh, happy birthday, Chandra. Um, Tuesday, March 22nd. Um, happy birthday to you. Um, I also wanted to mention, I know next Sunday is Easter Sunday, but we're still going to be going live because I, you know, for my family at least, our Easter festivities, we, we do that. We always go to lunch at my grandma's house um, at 1 o'clock, precisely. She likes to have it at 1 o'clock, um, meaning everybody's sitting down at 1 o'clock to eat. Um, even though uh, we're celebrating Easter, we're still gonna be going live next Sunday. So if you're not busy, I hope you'll join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And if you are busy, the live shows will be available anytime on my website, on Facebook, or on YouTube. Okay, so let's get to the giveaway of the week. Um, oh, oh, I already said share. You weren't paying attention earlier. Um, Danny's popping that share on the screen, but um, he was ignoring me earlier. I when you I talked about the challenge. <laughs> All right, so the giveaway for this week is for a set of fabrics. Let me show you in the side view and a box of threads. The, so these are threads designed by Cotton and Steel. It's six threads, they're 50 weight, um, which is great for quilting or bag making. You can use 50 weight threads on a bag. Um, hope my horse is peeking in there a little bit. Okay, so I found this fabric. I know this is true bag lady or well, not as much bag, dude, because it's an awful lot of pink, but we're throwing in with the, this with the giveaway, as well as a, cop, a couple of cotton and steel fabrics to go with the thread. So here we've got bag lady, 
bag lady and another really pretty thread, uh, sorry, not thread, fabric with metallic. So I think this is four yards of fabric and six spools of thread. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is to let me know and I'll draw the winner. It'll be a random winner that I'll announce on Saturday, which is the 31st, March 31st, the end of the day, I'll draw the winner. All you have to do to enter is let me know in the comments your answer to this question. How old were you when you learned to sew? So just let me know that answer in the comments. I learned to sew when I was in the third grade. I don't remember what age third grade is. What age is th eight, eight years old maybe? My mom taught me and my friend how to sew two different projects and then I didn't sew again until I was uh, in my 20s when I had uh, my kids. So that's my answer. Let me know your answer in the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing all the different ages people learned to sew at. And thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And I hope you'll join me this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time for my live show, Ask Sarah, where I'll be, where I'll be showing you that cool English paper piecing project combined with uh, a little accessory that you can use to keep your sewing supplies or cosmetics. So thanks so much for joining me and happy sewing. Thank you.